Hi, everyone. I want to talk to you about re-entry. I know that so many of you are preparing to go back out in the field, or for many of our liaisons, we are out in the field. And that doesn't mean that we're seeing all of our providers. Some providers are not allowing anyone through the door, so we'll drop something off. But to make sure that we're keeping that face-to-face -face contact is super important. But right now, I'm personally working with one of our clients in the Midwest launching a, a physician onboarding program. And our onboarding program is super robust, and we do a lot of value stream mapping or a lot of process improvement work to see what the process looks like now from the eye of the provider and their family. So as I was doing a process map yesterday on what the liaison does as it relates to onboarding and navigating a new provider, I thought about a tip that we could share with you around your re-entry back into the field. And since there's going to be so many new norms, and I know it's beginning to uh, be a very overused term, but my question to you is, have you mapped out the new process from your provider's perspective, from your provider's office staff pers perspective, and from the patient perspective? Because what happened pre-COVID is going to look different, in some cases, a lot different than it did before. And how are the offices to know to tell patients? And that's where we come in. And so the one thing that I would recommend you start doing is literally map out the process. So let's just talk about imaging. So is they're going to order CT and MRs, what does that look like now to schedule? What does that look like to, for the patient in terms of a pre-authorization or a pre-registration look like? And then what happens when the patient is notified by the hospital or the imaging center or whatever your organization happens to be? What do we call the patient? Do they register online now? And when I talk about mapping out, and I'm going to share my screen and just show you a value stream map that we use in our organization. This is just a template. So I could show you one that is super, uh, you know, written on a flip chart. But what you'll see here is when you do a value stream map or call it a process map so it doesn't get too leany if you're not a black belt, green belt, yellow belt, white belt, whatever, all the belts, you don't have to be lean certified to do a process map. You're just mapping it step by step by step. So we always recommend for you to get yellow post-it notes, get red dots, green dots, so you can look at where that's a value add from the customer perspective. Because a lot of times when we lean things out, we lean it out on the inside and only shift that burden to the customer. So you are the champion of the customer to make sure that we're not shifting that burden to them. So if you look at this, you'll see that each uh, yellow post, it represents a step. What is the step and who does it? So the first step for an imaging procedure order would be call and schedule the procedure. So it would be scheduling and then who does that? And then currently, is it a value add step? So a value add, again, from the customer perspective is, does it drive value? Can we skip that step and they don't even notice it? Or do we really need to have it? We we're just doing it because we always done it that way. So walk through the step. Then we have other color uh, post-it notes. We use a blue post-it note when we need to gather more data, like something doesn't make sense about that, but we need to research or do some data collection. And so, you know, you'll hear Kaizen, a Kaizen in the lean world. It's just a, a just do it, just something that you see like, oh my goodness, that is a wasted step. We don't even have to ask anyone to stop doing something or start doing it. That would be a Kaizen. And then the pink would be an action needed. Like you can't start or stop doing it right away, but there's some action that has to be created, whether it is a meeting that needs to be scheduled to bring people together to decide. So the arrows, you know, don't necessarily have to be done, but arrows between steps tells you how it gets from step A to step B. And that that's a really important time because there's a lot of what we call queue time in the middle. So that's often wasted time. That as you walk it to the next step or you email it to the next step, 
you never know how much time is being wasted right then, which sounds normal from an internal perspective, but to the customer, like what takes two weeks for you to call me back between the time I schedule, uh, my test is scheduled and the time you contact me. So those middle times are really important. We're not doing anything with it. We're, it's just setting in the queue. So just take a look at this and maybe, maybe this is a little bit too complicated or maybe it's too simplistic for you, but whatever you do, as as you are re-entering back into the marketplace, make sure that you, of all people, of all teams, completely understand the new process so that you can articulate that to the providers and their staff. All right, hopefully this is helpful. If you need any help, don't ever hesitate to call us. We'll see you next week.